In this video, I'll be covering Screen Shake. I'm starting with a bunch of code taken from the fifth episode of my Core Platformer series. So this code has things like animations, movement, collisions, a tile system, and stuff like that. But for Screen Shake, you can ignore all that. I'm just going to be using this code so you have something to look at that's moving around from Screen Shake. The important things to note here are that I am rendering everything onto a surface and then I'm rendering that surface onto the main display surface, which can be convenient if you just want a dirty screen shake solution. Anyways, screen shake is very simple in concept. If you've seen my video on camera movement or scrolling or whatever, it's the same concept. You're just moving everything around depending on the circumstances. It's just that with screen shake, you're generally moving things around randomly rather than moving everything around so that your view is changing according to the position of your player or whatever. A lot of these things can easily be broken down into things you already know how to do, although it may be many of them. So if you're really paying attention and thinking about these things, a lot of times you can implement them without having to look up how to do these things. So for screen shake, Typically you're moving around the view kind of randomly whenever something happens that you want to give impact. And that's something that's pretty easy to do if you've already got a surface you're rendering everything onto. So the first thing I'm going to need though is a random library so I can do things randomly. So I'm going to import that. And then the dirty solution is just move the whole display around. I'm going to do a thing where if I press up, I'm, it's gonna just do a screen shake. It's the jump button. So I'm just going to add a screen shake variable. That just basically says how much screen shake there is left to do. So if I press up screen shake equals about half a second of screen shaking. That might be a bit much, I don't know. And then if screen, I think I hit an underscore. If screen shake is more than zero, screen shake minus equals one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a render position here. So for the display I'm rendering onto the actual main display. So under offset, I'll call it that. We'll be that by default. And then you can just put that in here. If you're wondering why I've got a surface that I'm rendering everything onto before I render it onto the main display, it's because I do pixel art and I'm actually scaling it up here. And in a lot of cases, people won't be using this, which is why I'll go over the second solution in a bit. Anyways. So I can do if screen shake, if you're unfamiliar with how if statements work with booleans and stuff in Python, if you just put in a value like this, it'll evaluate that value. The only thing that evaluates to false is zero in terms of integers. Any other number evaluates to true. So if it's not zero, a screen shake will evaluate to true. And the screen shake variable is just a timer that gets set to, to 30 and counts down to zero. So for 30 frames or whatever, it'll be on, basically. And then let's do eight minus four. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting the X and Y offset to a random number from zero to eight minus four. So if you do that, it becomes negative four to neg uh, negative four to four. And so that's just a random four pixel offset up to four pixels in any direction. So now let's see how that looks. All right, so the screen shakes a bit long, but you can't see the screen is shaking a lot here. All right, so for this next implementation, I'm going to shorten that screen shake because it's a bit long. So the issue with doing it like this, and this is the reason I called it the dirty solution, is that some weird stuff will start to happen at the border of the screen uh, because you're moving the, the surface you're rendering onto around. A lot of times it'll just be a, a black box or whatever. The cleaner way to do it is that if you've got a game where you've basically got a camera moving around, you can just move that. In which in this example, I've got the scrolling value so I can move everything around by that scrolling value. Normally, if you're doing some user interface stuff, you'll ignore the scrolling value for that, but you might wanna apply your screen shake to that. So you might wanna have a separate value for screen shake that you apply to everything. Although the easy solution is to just modify the non-GUI stuff, the, part that, the parts that normally do move around. So I'm going to go 
up here. And something interesting about the setup I've got here is I've got basically a true scroll value and a scroll value. The scroll value is a copy of the true scroll value and it converts everything to integers because that's what some things need to render. Pygames doesn't like it when you render some things at decimal locations. So the scroll value is a copy and it's also converted to an integer. So I can, since this is a copy, I can modify it without modifying the actual scroll value. The actual scroll value can only be modified by modifying true scroll. So I can make temporary changes by modifying scroll here. So I'm going to just do the same thing. So if screen shake, then I can do scroll zero plus equals random dot random zero to eight minus four, and then do that for scroll one. Actually, I made a mistake. I forgot to take this out. This still need, this needs to go back to zero to zero. All right. So as you can see, there's a similar effect when I jump here. Still feels pretty long with a screen shake. Hold on. Just made it shorter again. So that's closer to what you'd expect. It's actually a pretty big screen shake too. But anyways, this is the cleaner solution. In this case, you can't really tell the difference much, but for a lot of games, it'll be much cleaner if you do it like this. But like I said though, if you want to modify basically the camera, and the positions of all the elements that takes a little bit of work because if you're already rendering some stuff at static locations you got to add that value in and if your scroll isn't a copy of the true scroll like mine is and you're using one scroll value you're also going to have a problem because you'd be modifying it permanently so you're going to have to add stuff to your system to be able to handle this it's just an extra offset you have to be able to add to everything so you can move everything around anyways that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions you can go to my discord server i've got a channel dedicated to questions there where i can answer them quickly if you're interested in my projects you can check out my twitter or actually uh, my website which is the fluffy potato.com if you have any issues you can check out the code from the video description that fixes most of the issues people end up having that's pretty much it i hope i'll see you guys next time